Bikepacking is unique because it takes away the essence of time. Adventure for me is seeing new areas and seeing what you're capable of. This being our first time to Arizona, you never know what's gonna what's gonna happen, and I think that's that's what really makes the sense of adventure feel alive. We're gonna start in Flagstaff. We're gonna work our way past Sedona and end up in Cottonwood. We're gonna take three days to do it. I've never been biking in Arizona before. A good chance to go and explore a new place. So one of the fun things about bikepacking, I'd say, would be probably taking some detours. <laughs> Do you think you'd start straight with the overbird? We go that way. A back crack? A crack. Up the crack. Oh, we get the high Yeah. <laughs> See? That's like... I guess my favorite part about the trip has been just seeing all this new terrain. I love checking out new areas. I mean, the Southwest landscape is just such a different environment from what I'm used to. It's just something new and something interesting every time I look around the corner, and I think that's pretty special. It's nice to have those moments where things are a little bit more relaxed and mellow, and it's not scary and intense, it's just enjoyable. This bikepacking trip is important to me because I think it gives me an opportunity to just get out and enjoy the moment and instead of worrying about all the other things that are going on in life. It's just great to be here and enjoy being outdoors. <laughs> That's way cool. Well, actually, look at that. Three, ten? Oh, no, no, no. Two servings. Portions. It's a 620. Ooh, 820. Dang! What is this? Woke up in the morning and it was freezing but the sun came up, had some coffee, worked our way across Anderson Mesa. Come on, Jackie, we just did a, a sweet descent. Just leave me here. Yeah. We just have one more climb left. Yeah. Said it was all downhill. No! That's not downhill. <laughs> We're yet to get to the good stuff. Rode through a couple of nice meadows, saw some old cabins, and at that point in our trip, it'd been Pretty consistent, you know, it's just high desert alpine, you know, we get cool pine trees and stuff like that. But, you know, once we rolled over this hill and we crested to the top, we first kind of set our eyes on Sedona and it was amazing. The Red Rock Cathedral, rock spires that were just shooting up, where they were just lit up from the sun just about to set. And it was just this picture perfect moment. Around like 5.30 every evening, the wind would pick up, which was also around the same time when we were trying to set up camp. That got a little tricky. Next thing you know, you're in the Red Rocks. Amazing sights that, you know, I've only seen a few times in my life. We definitely got to ride a little bit of everything, which was really cool. So you've got a normal trail bike, and then you put bags on it. And a lot of people think that just because you got bags on your bike means that you can't party. Once you get rolling down the hill, you've got plenty of time to party. Arizona is not predictable. It's kind of like always got you on your feet. I have my second flat. 
Your second flat. My second flat. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we learned how to do this on the first one, so. We didn't exactly learn how to do it. We just did it. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, coach. <laughs> spending 24 hours a day with that individual and you know, you're joking around, you're tired, it gets weird. Stan is definitely a funny guy. Sometimes I'm laughing with him and sometimes I'm laughing at him. In the 90 miles that we rode, we really got to see a little bit of everything and that really makes it feel like it was a, you know, a good trip. I wish it never ended. What I like least about a trip like this is, you know, saying goodbye to my friend that lives in a different part of the world. When you come back to civilization, you kind of leave a little bit of yourself out on the trail. <laughs>